Hi, in this video I'm going to briefly talk about why amplitude modulation is important and will introduce the envelope detector and its various uses. Now before we do that, let me swap my camera out so we can focus on the content. Alright, so what is amplitude modulation? If x of t is a continuous time signal, then the signal v of t defined by v of t equals x of t cosine of omega c t is called an amplitude modulated carrier. Cosine of omega c t is called the carrier and omega c is known as the carrier frequency. x of t on the other hand is known as the modulating signal but in general as long as x of t varies slowly compared to the carrier cosine of omega c t we usually call x of t the envelope. So as an example let's look at the signal v of t equals 1 plus 0.5 times cosine of 2 pi times 5 t and then this whole thing is multiplied by cosine of 2 pi times 50 t. We have our carrier is that carrier frequency 50 hertz and then our envelope x of t is 1 plus 0.5 times cosine of 2 pi times 5 t which is a shifted sinusoid at 5 hertz. And as you can see the frequency of our modulating signal x of t is much lower than the frequency of our carrier. And a plot of this AM modulated signal v of t is shown here in which as you can see these blue oscillations are the high frequency variations of the carrier and then this is our envelope x of t. Now why is amplitude modulation important? There's many reasons why it's important but in particular I'm going to go through four reasons that I think highlight why amplitude modulation is important. So first of all let's suppose that we have an LC oscillatory circuit here's an inductor and here's a capacitor and we want this circuit to act as an antenna. Now in transmission the electric current will get supplied to the antenna's terminals and the antenna would radiate their energy from the current in an electromagnetic wave also called a radio wave. So in order for this to work its dimensions would have to be on the same order as the wavelength of its oscillations. So we have C equals lambda F which is equivalent to saying that lambda equals C over F. Now let's suppose that we want to transmit an audio signal of 5 kilohertz. Then lambda equals 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over 5 times 10 to the 3 hertz. And here I'm assuming that the relative permittivity of the medium that we're transmitting this audio is 1. That's why C is 3 times 10 to the 8. And this evaluates to 60 kilometers. So it's practically impossible to build an antenna with this sort of dimension. Now, if we modulate our audio signal with a high frequency carrier of, say, 1 megahertz, then this gives us lambda equals 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over 1 times 10 to the 6 hertz which turns out to be 300 meters. And it's much more practical to build an antenna with this dimension as opposed to 60 kilometers. Second, certain frequencies have more or less attenuation when, say, traveling through the atmosphere, and so we want to be able to change the frequency f of our radio wave so that it experiences less attenuation. Third, our ears are capable of detecting frequencies only within a certain audible range, which is like between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Now devices such as mobile phones, radios, etc. can be used to transmit audible information from one location to another. However, the limitations of antenna size and noise, which is 1 and 2 here, make it very difficult to transmit and receive data directly at audible frequencies. So it's difficult to transmit and receive data at audible frequencies. 
and we can overcome this limitation by converting our audio signal to a high frequency signal for transmission and then reconstructing the original signal based off of this high frequency signal at the remote location. And the process of converting this audio signal to a high frequency signal through multiplying by a carrier cosine of omega CT is what we call amplitude modulation. And by using amplitude modulation, we can design a transmitter that converts our audio signal into a format that's suitable for long distance communication. We can then design a receiver that takes in the modulated signal and reconstructs it to output the original audio signal XFT. And the process of reconstructing the original signal from the received signal is what's known as demodulation. And fourth, we want to be able to transmit multiple signals at the same time. So transmit multiple signals simultaneously. And as you'll learn about later in the course, by modulating each signal at a different frequency, we can build receivers that filter out to all other frequencies and only process the desired frequency. And this is why amplitude modulated signals form the basis of what's known as commercial AM radio. So in commercial AM radio, each station modulates with a different carrier frequency, 10 kHz larger than the previous station and 10 kHz smaller than the next station. So that way receivers can be tuned to pass only the desired frequency range corresponding to the station we're trying to listen to and reject all other frequencies. And there's many other reasons why amplitude modulation is important. Now, in many applications of amplitude modulation, including AM radio, we want to be able to recover the envelope X of T from our modulated carrier signal V of T, and this leads us to the definition of the envelope detector. So, an envelope detector is a system that takes in V of T equals X of T cosine of omega CT as its input, and produces absolute value of x of t as the output. And at the end of this lab, you should be able to build a working envelope detector that relatively accurately detects the envelope of different amplitude modulated sinusoids. Now, we talked about AM radio as the reason why envelope detector would be useful. Another application of envelope detection is what's known as frequency shift keying. So one application of envelope detector besides AM radio is frequency shift keying, abbreviated as FSK. And this will be the focus of your lab three. So an analog communication system like AM radio transmits an analog signal, that is a signal that's continuous in time and continuous in amplitude, from the transmitter to the receiver. Now, in digital communication systems, which is what you'll use in Lab 3, the values of the signal X are discrete or are quantized, and the time N is also discrete. Once our signal is in digital form, there are many different ways we can use to transmit this digital data. And the way that you'll use in Lab 3 is binary frequency shift keying, or binary FSK, where the data is transmitted as a sequence of tones or sinusoids, and each tone can have only one of two possible frequencies, which is why it's called binary. The high frequency tone will be assigned the binary digit 1, and the low frequency tone will be assigned the binary digit 0. And so in lab 3, your computer will transmit an 8-bit binary string using a sequence of 8 tones, and you'll build a circuit that converts each tone, or a 2-second sinusoid, into an output signal that somehow reflects the corresponding frequency of the tone. And we'll do this using a differentiator followed by an envelope detector. Now you might wonder, how does a differentiator followed by an envelope detector actually discriminate between the two frequency tones? And as it turns out, by differentiating a sinusoid, so DDT of, in general, cosine of omega t, by chain rule is omega, or in this case is minus omega times sine of omega t. So, if we take the envelope of the sinusoid, we're left with omega. And this way, for the high frequency tone, we'll have a larger DC output from the envelope detector, and for the smaller frequency tone, there'll be a smaller DC output from the envelope detector since omega is smaller. And so the output of the differentiator 
and the envelope detector might look something like this. Here's the first two seconds, then here's the next two seconds, and then the next two, and then the next two seconds, and then the last two seconds. And since we know that a lower output corresponds to the binary digit 0 and the high output corresponds to the binary digit 1, you could write down the binary string encoded in the audio file, which is in this case is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then from that, you can convert it to base 10 and obtain the actual message. Alright, so we've talked about amplitude modulation, envelope detection, and different reasons why they're useful. And so in the next video, we'll take a look at an important nonlinear semiconductor device, which will play an important role in building the envelope detector.